Welcome to livingpianos.com. Robert Eston here with a personal story. My personal story about piano, how I ended up with piano. You might think that it would be obvious. Many of you know that my father, Morton Estrin, was a concert pianist. My sister is also a pianist. I've been surrounded with pianists my whole life and pianos. So you might think it's the most natural thing in the world that I ended up being a pianist. Well, far from it. Now, I always loved music. I got the opportunity to start piano, study with my father when I was seven years old. And shortly thereafter, in fourth grade, I was given a French horn at school to play in the band. And I was very taken with the instrument. I loved the tone. And the French horn is everything the piano isn't, and vice versa. The piano, there's only so much you can do with tone. Balance, of course, and yes, yes some pianists have a much more beautiful sound than other pianists. There, there, there's something to that. But in the French horn, you can hear just one note and go, oh my gosh, I know that player, or I like that sound, or I don't like this sound. And what you can do with one note is extraordinarily limited on the piano, but on the French horn, there's so much you can do with each note. It's unbelievable. Plus, I loved playing in the orchestra, in the band, and indeed, I was very serious on French horn. I divided my time between French horn and piano all through school. Now, I'll never forget, it was in middle school, in junior high, I, you know, I, I had a great French horn teacher, Hugh Cowden. Oh, he was absolutely such an inspiration to me. And I learned so much from that man uh, that it was unbelievable. He used to come over to my house for lessons. He would come to, come to me. And the lessons uh, were on Saturday. And we'd go downstairs in the playroom. And he would spend all afternoon there with, us, with me. And I, I, can't, I, I can make videos about what I learned from Hugh Cowden because there's so much. Uh, we would play duets together, play recordings. He would have me do excerpts as well as etudes and concertos and sonatas. I, I learned practically the, I wouldn't say the whole solo repertoire of, of the French horn, but <laughs> I would say, uh, you know, the, all the Mozart horn concertos, the Strauss concertos, the Glier concerto, Hindemith uh, sonata. I never did the Hindemith concerto, interestingly. But I, I really learned a tremendous amount and loved the French horn. And I played in several orchestras in high school, you know, some really good orchestras. Um, I got to play French horn in, with uh, Chuck Bangion, lead French horn, a bunch of solos. I have recordings of that at uh, the Allstate at Eastman School of Music. So I was extremely serious about the horn. It was in middle school, though, that I remember saying to my parents, oh my gosh, how am I going to decide between French horn and piano when it's time for college? And they go, oh, you'll know. And I said, no, I won't. And sure enough, I didn't. I couldn't make up my mind between French horn and piano. It was like, to some extent, there, there were many mitigating factors to this. One was, you know, my father had so many brilliant students, many of whom could play far more, were far more accomplished technically than I was. I have small hands, and growing up, I struggled to develop enough strength to be able to play the literature I wanted to play. It was really hard for me. I mean, I overcame it, but it took much more work. And I realized as a teacher years later how much easier piano is for so many of my students than it is for me. Students who could just leap from one level to another because their hands could do it once they could intellectualize the music. I didn't have that luxury. I had to work and work to develop the muscles and the, and the figuring how to break chords and all that stuff. The other thing is I loved playing an orchestra. And furthermore, I enjoyed practicing the French horn more than I enjoyed practicing the piano. French horn it was a visceral experience. And the sound, it was just fun, you know, and going through all the musical excerpts of the famous horn solos and all the repertoire, whereas piano was like almost drudgery, the work it takes to memorize music, it was just, you know, I loved once I memorized music, refining, refining, I, that was the part I loved, but that initial memorization, it's the hardest thing 
I ever do. And if any of you memorize piano music, you understand. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do. It is. I mean, putting music into your head, memorizing music, is really hard. And it's an essential part of piano practice. So that was another reason. So what happened after high school? Well, I decided that I would only audition at schools that offered double major with horn and piano. That's why I didn't apply to Juilliard because they didn't offer a double major, but the Manhattan School of Music did, and uh, also the Cleveland Institute of Music. So I applied at those schools and got in on both instruments uh, and decided to go to the Manhattan School of Music and uh, to get to study with the principal horn of the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra, and there were, the piano faculty was tremendous there as well. And what happened was, when I, when I went to my counselor and we're putting our schedule together, it became obvious very quickly that doing a double major would never leave me enough time to practice because it's not just the private lessons, it was all the course load would be doubled up. And, you know, being able to have enough time to practice anyway, when you're getting a, even with a music performance degree, is a great challenge. There, you have to take, you know, academics, you're getting a Bachelor of Music, so it, it's, it's an academic degree, so you've got your academics to worry about, you've got your music theory, history, um, you know, on and on. And so what I decided was, well, I'm gonna be a French horn major because I can always study uh, piano with my father, continue studying with him, and I wanted to be able to play in the ensembles because that's an integral part of playing the, the French horn is playing with an orchestra. Um, you know, piano, you can play all by yourself or you can do collaborative work with forehand piano, accompanying, chamber music, but you certainly have a lot to keep you busy, just a solo repertoire, whereas on the French horn, Ah, uh, everything involves other instruments, almost everything. Even the solo music you're playing with a pianist, but playing an orchestra, that's the end goal for a French hornist generally. There are very few people who only play solo French horn. Well, I had kind of a, um, an experience that I won't go into and I won't, remember, uh, I won't mention the name of the teacher, but it was a miserable experience that but sometime maybe I'll write in a book. I'm not going to share it with you because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But a really horrific thing happened that I had to stop studying with the teacher who I had. And at that point, I figured I might as well study uh, with a piano because I was accepted on piano. And Constance Keene, I was accepted by all the piano teachers there, which was very thrilling. And I decided to go back to Hugh Cowden on French horn. I had this great horn teacher. I figured, who needs this? So I went and studied um, with Constance Keene on piano and continued doing horn. Now, you might wonder, um, when did I finally just go for piano? Because the truth is, I haven't played the horn in quite a number of years. The last time I played the French horn, I actually played concerts both in New York and California with my father and my daughter. We did the Brahms Horn Trio, which is a magnificent work. You should listen to it if you've never heard it. It's a four movement, full bone, massive work. I also performed the Benjamin Britten Serenade for horn, strings, and tenor with an orchestra uh, in Orange County. I was in top shape, and this was in the early 2000s. But here's what's interesting. It was just at the same time that I had just put together the concept of the Living Piano Journey Through Time Historic Concert Experience. And I was really gung-ho about this. This was, uh, ended up being something I performed dozens of times in universities, art centers, conventions, all over California for the Music Teachers Convention, for the annual convention of the Piano Technicians Guild. I even did a Living Pianos Cruise. I did it in, in many art centers and universities, colleges, what have you. Well, anyway, I was in the formative stages of this, and my mind was completely wrapped around that, and yet I had these important performances, and I was practicing the horn incessantly and had almost no time for the piano. 
And so once those performances were over, I just completely left the horn in the case ever since, which is kind of shameful. I do have some recordings. One of these days, maybe I'll post uh, the Brahms Horn Trio performance. I was, I was playing the, the horn part of that. My father was playing the piano. My daughter was playing the violin part. And so that's really when I became totally immersed in the piano. Before that, I always divided my time between French horn and piano, up until just the early 2000s. Can you believe that? So that's my personal piano story. I bet many of you are surprised to hear this. I'd love to hear from you, and any of you have had experiences with multiple instruments, and anybody who's taken as long as I took to make up my mind about what instrument would be my primary instrument, I'd love to hear from you if anybody has topped me on that score. Again, I'm Robert Estrin. This is livingpianos.com, your online piano resource. Thanks for joining me, ringing that bell and subscribing and passing the word on your social media about this channel and what I do here for people. I really appreciate it. Thanks again.